We're going to add some phrases here that will help you to see some patterns throughout the Book of Mormon. Remember, the Book of Mormon was preserved for our day. So, Tyler, I'm just going to add this up here. So, we have the Order of Nehor that we'll be talking about in chapter 14. And then this is the Order of God. And as you read the Book of Mormon, you will see this pattern throughout. Who is following the order and the ordinances of God? And what are the consequences of those choices? Who is following the order of Nehor and being self-focused? What are the consequences? I'm going to add two other phrases here that don't really show up right now in the Book of Mormon, but will show up later in the Book of Mormon, but really re um, relate to what's happening here. First phrase is secret combinations. Secret combinations is all about groups of people binding themselves together with oaths and promises to do terrible deeds to others to benefit themselves. Contrast that to what God asks of us. Sacred covenants. Look at the difference. Sacred covenants is what we do when we bind ourselves to others to serve them, to serve God, to get outside of ourselves. All the things that we have been hearing in scriptures that Tyler just summarized, that is sacred covenants. And one of the main purposes of the Book of Mormon is to reveal God's covenants, the covenant path, and the things that we should be doing to serve others. And then we have the contrast of what happens to societies who get involved in secret combinations and being self-focused. One of the great things, um, Tyler and I have spent a lot of time in the field of education, and one of the powerful ways that uh, educators are trained in how to teach is to give an example and a non-example. You want something that, do this, don't do this. In fact, imagine the Book of Mormon, imagine the story of Nephi without Laman and Lemuel. I mean, Nephi would still be a pretty amazing character, but without that stark contrast of the non-example, of Laman and Lemuel, you wouldn't be able to actually show how powerful living the gospel is. So what we have is the non-example, we have many of these stories, and the example. And right here, in these passages today, Alma 14 is the non-example, Alma 13 is the example. And these are put back to back, so as we compare and contrast them, we can see Oh, this is as clear as day, it's black and white, that God has invited me to participate in sacred covenants and to avoid secret combinations, to stand against these things, and to work against my fallen and carnal nature so I can become a child of God and have the order in my life where I feel his power.